If you get firm but lose it within minutes, even during intimacy, the problem isn't your blood flow. It's not your testosterone. It's not even your age. It's two specific muscles at the base of your anatomy that have stopped doing their job. And when these muscles fail, blood flows in but immediately leaks back out, leaving you soft exactly when you need to stay firm. The research is clear. Studies show the ischiocavernosus muscles create rigidity by producing supersystolic intracavernous pressures, meaning pressure higher than your systolic blood pressure. Research demonstrates a clear relationship between these muscle contractions, intracavernous pressure increases, and maintaining firmness. A landmark study published in Physical Therapy tracked men with challenges who underwent pelvic floor muscle rehabilitation. Over 20 sessions, maximum intracavernous pressure change increased 87% in men with positive trends. Maximum baseline pressure increased 99%. The men who can stay firm for extended periods have one thing in common. Their pelvic floor muscles, specifically the ischiocavernosus and bulbospongiosus muscles, contract powerfully and automatically, trapping blood inside and maintaining rigid firmness. The men who fade within minutes have weakened, atrophied muscles that fail to contract adequately. Blood flows in but leaks back out immediately. Today. I'm revealing the exact biological mechanism causing this. The simple 60-second activation protocol that retrains these muscles, and why this works the very first time you try it. Hello, gentlemen. I'm Dr. Mika Hayashi, a urologist with over a decade of experience helping men over 50 restore and maintain firmness through evidence-based pelvic floor rehabilitation techniques. Today, I'm sharing the precise muscle activation protocol proven in clinical trials to increase intracavernous pressure and dramatically improve your ability to maintain firm, sustained responses. Before we begin, please hit that like button right now, drop a comment telling me where you're watching from, and subscribe so you never miss techniques that could restore your confidence immediately. Now let me explain exactly why you're losing firmness and how to fix it. Getting firm requires blood to flow into your corpus cavernosum, but staying firm requires something completely different. You must trap that blood inside and prevent it from leaking back out. This is where the ischiocavernosus and bulbospongiosus muscles become critical. Research shows the ischiocavernosus muscles compress the corpus cavernosum against the pubic bone. The area compressed ranges from 35.6% to 55.9% of total corpus cavernosum volume. When these muscles contract forcefully, they create mechanical compression that produces intracavernous pressures far exceeding your systolic blood pressure. Studies document pressures reaching several hundred mmHg during maximum contraction. This suprasystolic pressure serves two critical functions. First, it compresses the veins draining blood from your anatomy, preventing outflow. Second, it forces additional blood into the distal portions, creating maximum rigidity. The bulbospongiosus muscle surrounds the bulb and compresses the deep dorsal vein, the primary drainage pathway. During muscle contraction, elevations in intracavernous pressure and decreases in venous outflow rates occur simultaneously. These muscles differentiate a tumescent phase from a rigid phase. You can achieve tumescence, partial firmness, through blood inflow alone. But achieving true rigidity, rock-hard firmness that maintains during movement and stimulation absolutely requires these muscle contractions. After age 50, these muscles weaken dramatically. They lose tone, atrophy, and fail to contract automatically during arousal. When they don't engage, blood flows in but leaks back out immediately through uncompressed veins. You get partially firm but fade within minutes. If this is making sense, hit that like button right now. In your 20s and 30s, the ischiocavernosus and bulbospongiosus muscles were strong and responsive. They contracted automatically and powerfully during arousal without conscious effort. After 50, several factors cause progressive weakening. 
Testosterone decline reduces muscle protein synthesis and maintenance. Sedentary lifestyle leads to disuse atrophy. Pelvic floor muscles, like all skeletal muscles, follow the use it or lose it principle. Prostate enlargement creates chronic pelvic congestion that interferes with normal muscle function. Years of straining during urination or bowel movements can damage the pudendal nerve supplying these muscles. Research shows pelvic floor muscle rehabilitation benefits men with challenges. Strengthening interventions can be associated with increases in intracavernous pressure that increase rigidity. The encouraging news. These are skeletal muscles under voluntary control. With proper training, you can rebuild strength and restore automatic contraction patterns. Before I give you the protocol, you need to see the overwhelming research proving pelvic floor muscle training works. Study 1. Somerset Nuffield Hospital Trial. 55 men with challenges, median age 59.2 years, were randomized. 28 received pelvic floor muscle exercises with biofeedback. 27 received only lifestyle advice. After three months, the intervention group showed clinical improvement of 6.74 points on the IIEF function domain, a highly significant improvement with P equals 0.004. The control group showed no significant increase with P equals 0.658. At six months, intervention group improvement reached 9.88 points. When the control group finally received training, they improved 10.94 points, confirming the intervention works. All men achieved penile retraction and lift during training. As muscle strength improved, response initiated faster. Individual cases revealed return of nocturnal responses following just one to four weeks of training before regaining full function. Study 2. Systematic Review of 10 Clinical Trials A comprehensive systematic review analyzed 10 trials investigating pelvic floor muscle training. Among all measures, every single trial showed comparative improvement and positive response rates to treatment. The review concluded pelvic floor muscle training appears effective, though optimal training protocols varied. Regardless of specific protocol used, improvements occurred consistently. Study 3. Biofeedback Pelvic Floor Training 30 men presenting with challenges were evaluated before and after biofeedback pelvic floor training. Results showed significant improvements in function scores, quality of life measures, and maximum squeezing pressure of pelvic floor muscles measured manometrically. The study demonstrated that strengthening these specific muscles directly correlates with improved function. Study 4. Radical Prostatectomy Rehabilitation 97 men undergoing surgery were allocated to either control, 3 sets daily, or intervention, 6 sets daily in standing position. The intervention group performing more frequent standing exercises showed significantly better outcomes at all measured time points. Real-time ultrasound confirmed pelvic floor muscle function improvements correlated with better functional outcomes. These aren't isolated studies. This is consistent, reproducible science from multiple countries, multiple research teams, all showing the same result. Pelvic floor muscle training works. Comment below if these research findings surprise you. This protocol must be performed before intimacy, not during. You're priming the muscles to contract powerfully when needed. Step 1. Locate the muscles. 10 seconds. Sit comfortably. Tighten the muscles you would use to stop urination midstream. You should feel a lifting, tightening sensation at the base of your anatomy and throughout your pelvic floor. These are your target muscles. The ischiocavernosus muscles run along both sides of the base. The bulbospongiosus muscle wraps around the bulb. Step two, maximum voluntary contraction, 30 seconds. Contract these muscles as forcefully as possible. Hold maximum contraction for five seconds. Don't hold your breath, breathe normally. Release completely for three seconds. Repeat four times total. 
Research shows maximum voluntary contractions coupled with adequate rest intervals produce optimal strength gains. Step 3. Quick pulses, 20 seconds. Perform rapid squeeze and release cycles. Contract quickly and release immediately. Repeat 20 to 25 times as fast as you can while maintaining proper contraction. Quick pulses train the fast twitch muscle fibers responsible for generating maximum intracavernous pressure spikes during intimacy. Total time, 60 seconds. Perform this protocol three to five minutes before intimacy. The muscles remain primed and responsive for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. One patient, 64 years old, had been fading within two to three minutes consistently. After implementing this 60-second protocol before intimacy, he maintained firm responses throughout entire encounters. He said, I couldn't believe 60 seconds of muscle squeezing made such a dramatic difference. It worked the very first time. Unlike supplements requiring weeks to show effects, this mechanical activation works instantly because you're directly engaging the muscles responsible for trapping blood. The 60-second protocol creates post-activation potentiation. Your muscles become temporarily more responsive and capable of generating greater force for 15 to 20 minutes following intense contraction. When arousal occurs within this window, the primed muscles contract more powerfully and automatically than they would otherwise. Intracavernous pressure increases dramatically, venous outflow decreases, you achieve and maintain rigid firmness. For lasting improvement, implement daily training separate from intimacy. Morning protocol, five minutes daily. Perform three sets of 10 repetitions. Each repetition, hold maximum contraction for eight to 10 seconds. Rest five seconds between reps. Follow with three sets of 20 quick pulses with 10 seconds rest between sets. Studies show men performing this protocol for 12 weeks experience 87% to 99% increases in intracavernous pressure parameters. Advanced variations for maximum results. Standing position training. Research shows training in standing positions produces superior results compared to lying down. Perform your daily protocol while standing, which better simulates the position during intimacy. Biofeedback Enhancement If available, manometric biofeedback helps you identify correct muscle activation and track strength improvements objectively. Studies using biofeedback show accelerated results. Progressive Overload Start with 5-second holds. Progress to 8 seconds, then 10 seconds as strength improves. Increase repetitions from 10 to 15 per set over weeks. Frequency matters. Research comparing three sets daily versus six sets daily showed the higher frequency group achieved better outcomes. If you can manage six sets daily, spread throughout the day, results accelerate. What the research shows about timeline. Weeks one to two. Return of nocturnal firmness often occurs first, within one to four weeks of starting training, before daytime function fully returns. This is an encouraging early sign the muscles are responding. Weeks three to six. Measurable improvements in maximum squeezing pressure occur. You'll feel muscles contracting more powerfully. Partial improvements in function begin appearing. Weeks six to 12. Clinical improvement reaches six to 10 points on validated function scales. Most men achieve satisfactory results by week 12, with consistent training. Beyond 12 weeks, continued training maintains and may further enhance results. The muscles remain responsive to ongoing training like any skeletal muscle group. Research identifies common reasons men don't succeed with pelvic floor training. Mistake one, incorrect muscle identification. Many men contract their abdominals, buttocks, or thighs instead of pelvic floor muscles. Solution. Place fingers on perineum between scrotum and anus. You should feel lifting and tightening specifically in that area, not your abdomen or buttocks. Mistake two, insufficient training intensity. 
Performing weak, half-hearted contractions produces minimal results. Solution. Contract as forcefully as possible. If you're not feeling significant muscle fatigue after three sets, you're not contracting hard enough. Mistake three. Inconsistent practice. Training sporadically, missing multiple days, prevents cumulative strength building. Solution. Set phone reminders. Link training to existing habits like brushing teeth or morning coffee. Mistake four. Giving up too early. Some men try for two weeks, see minimal change, and quit. Solution. Commit to minimum 12 weeks. Research shows significant improvements occur between weeks 6 and 12, not in the first two weeks. Mistake 5. Training only before intimacy. The 60-second pre-intimacy activation works because muscles are already strong from daily training. Without daily strength building, the activation protocol alone produces minimal results. Solution. Daily minute training plus pre-intimacy activation. Additional factors that enhance results. Cardiovascular exercise. Research shows men with cardiovascular disease who combine aerobic training with pelvic floor exercises show greater improvements than pelvic floor training alone. Aim for 30 minutes of brisk walking, cycling, or swimming three to four times weekly. Weight management. Excess abdominal fat creates chronic pelvic congestion, interfering with muscle function. Losing even 5% to 10% of body weight significantly improves outcomes. Smoking cessation. Smoking damages blood vessels and impairs tissue oxygenation. Men who quit smoking while performing pelvic floor training show dramatically better results. Stress reduction. Chronic stress elevates cortisol, which interferes with muscle protein synthesis and recovery. Incorporate stress management techniques like deep breathing, meditation, or yoga. Adequate sleep. Muscle recovery and growth hormone release occur primarily during deep sleep. Aim for seven to nine hours nightly. The difference between men who stay firm all night and men who fade in two minutes isn't genetics, age, or luck. It's pelvic floor muscle strength and activation pattern. The research from multiple clinical trials across different countries consistently demonstrates pelvic floor muscle training produces clinical improvements of 6 to 11 points on validated function scales. Men regain nocturnal responses within 1 to 4 weeks. Full functional improvements occur within 6 to 12 weeks of consistent training. Starting today, implement both protocols. Use the 60-second activation before intimacy for immediate enhancement. Perform the 5-minute daily training protocol every morning for long-term strength building. Track your progress. Notice when nocturnal responses return. That's your first sign of success. Notice when you can maintain firmness longer during intimacy. Notice when you can stay firm through position changes and variations in stimulation. Commit to 12 weeks minimum. Research shows this timeline produces clinically significant, measurable improvements. Don't evaluate results after two weeks and give up. Give your muscles adequate time to rebuild strength. If this helped you, hit that like button right now. Comment below and honestly tell me how long you typically maintain firmness currently. Your answer helps me create content addressing your specific challenges. Subscribe for more evidence-based techniques that restore confidence and capability. I'm Dr. Mika Hayashi. Your body still works. The muscles responsible for maintaining firmness are skeletal muscles under voluntary control. With proper training, they respond, strengthen, and restore function. The research proves it. Now you have the knowledge. All that remains is consistent implementation.